Welcome to the webinar, uh, Ways to Reduce Your Credit Card Processing Fees. We're going to learn some really helpful, straightforward ways to save your business some money. There's uh, still some attendees gathering in, so we're going to wait till straight up on the hour to get started. So wait with us for another few seconds, and then we'll get going. Okay, I've, I've got exactly 2 p.m. Central. Uh, my name's Scott Webb. I'm editor of Aqua Magazine. Uh, we have Matt Ray, who is managing partner for Merchant Cost Consulting, uh, a company that has figured out a way to save businesses money. Uh, and we're gonna learn how to do that today. So without uh, further ado, uh, Mr. Ray, over to you. Scott, much appreciated, thank you. And obviously appreciate everyone who's joining. This is recorded so you guys can watch this at another time as well. Or if you have to jump off at any point, you'll be able to see the recording. And I'll preface this by saying, if there's any questions throughout the presentation, if you guys want to just interject or feel free to ping Scott in the chat, um, he can ask the questions away. I want to try to make this as interactive as possible. I know uh, every time people talk about credit card processing, they get heartburn. Right? It's not necessarily the most fun expense or topic of discussion, but it's definitely something worth noting. So with that, we'll jump right in. Just want to go over some learning objectives right, for everyone to understand. So we'll obviously go over merchant cost consulting, what we do, how we came about. Um, we'll go over the, you know, the average cost to accept credit cards in your specific industry, you know, whether you're a pool and spot dealer, retailer, service company, construction company, or even if you're a manufacturer or a distributor uh, within the space, right? We'll go over some hidden fees and identifying them, and we'll actually break down a statement that you guys can see. Then we'll go over a case study, um, Thatcher Pools, right? Which is a, a large retailer out in Minnesota. And then just kind of leave it as an open discussion questions um, for you, know, you guys that you want to ask throughout the presentation, right? Or towards the end. So some background about me. Um, went to Bryant University, got a business degree, had nothing to do with credit card processing, right? This isn't necessarily something that you go to school for. Um, first job out of college was working for a credit card processing company. Again, knew nothing about it. Just had a buddy of mine who said, you know, it's a, it's a good gig, sales job, way to make money. So took the opportunity here in Boston, Massachusetts. That company was eventually bought out by Paysafe, which is a massive payment acquirer, which I'll get into. But in short, in that stint, I learned everything about credit card processing, right? How it works, how the mindset is on the other side of the fence, right? And in short, you know, obviously the higher they set the rates and fees on you, the business owner, the more money goes into the pockets of the payment processing companies, which you can imagine leads to sometimes unethical behavior, unethical pricing, uh, deceptive tactics when it comes to pricing, and we'll get into that during the presentation. But because of all those things that happened, that really led to the inception of Merchant Cost Consulting, which is we understood that all these different things were happening in businesses. It was not aligning with them to get the best deal possible. And we're like, there's a better way for a business to accept credit cards without the hassle, right? Of having to wonder if the deal is going to be good or not, or paying high rates and fees. We wanted to leverage our knowledge, knowledge, data, and expertise to help businesses get the best deal possible, bring transparency to credit card processing, and doing this all without having to make changes to their current setup or provider, which we'll get into throughout the presentation. But that's some background about us. Um, Merchant Cost Consulting started in 2016. Right, so that's the inception of this, and we've been going strong ever since. Um, you may have seen us also in, you know, Carecraft, United Aqua Group, Phone Hut Sub Alliance. We go to all the conferences. So check us out in person, meet us in person, reach out if you have questions. But to dive right in, right, this is a big thing that we get, and if you're having trouble seeing my screen, you can interject. But the biggest question we get asked from pool and spa retailers, service companies, construction businesses. It's like, 
Matt, what should I be paying when it comes to accepting credit cards, right? And the short answer to that, which you'll see down here in the third bullet is when you take your total fees and you divide it by total sales, that rate should come around the 2.2 to 2.5% if you're priced accordingly. Now, this can fluctuate, and we'll get into the details here, but that's just a very simple calculation that you guys can do on your own when you're looking through your credit card processing reports, going through either the monthly totals, the annual totals of what you paid in fees, right? Obviously, tax time's coming up, so this is a good time where some businesses it slows down, right? So look at your purchase, uh, your profit and loss, see what you paid in fees, right? So that's a simple calculation to do. But starting at the top, right? And this is kind of the boring part that I try to want to make interactive. But 90% of the fees that you guys pay, unfortunately, are non-negotiable. 90% of those fees that you guys pay are called interchange rates. And in short, if you go into your wallet and you take out your credit card, your corporate business card, your debit card, every single card that you guys have or own has a specific rate associated to that card. And you can't do anything about them. So for example, if you pull out your Chase Sapphire card, that card has a rate of 2.2% plus 10 cents a transaction. So if I'm a customer, I walk into your uh, retail business and I give you my Chase Sapphire card. At the very minimum, when you take that card from me, you are paying that amount. In addition to the processing markups, that the credit card processing companies add to it, which we'll get to in a second. So realize that there are fees that you can manipulate and reduce, and there's fees that you cannot. Interchange fees are some that you cannot have any say over whatsoever. It's the cost of doing business. It pays for the frequent flyer miles, the cash back programs, you know, all the rewards programs that you and I all have, right, when we're using a credit card. And there's over 750 different interchange rates associated with all these rewards programs. Some are more expensive than others. In layman's terms, if you have a rewards card, that card is gonna be more expensive for your business versus if someone walks in and uses a debit card, right? Yeah. Debit cards are the least expensive um, out of the realm of cards that you yeah. accept, right? American Express is also super expensive, which I'm sure that you guys have ran into. Sometimes dealers don't take American Express for that reason, which we'll get into. But just keep that in the back of your mind that, again, some are negotiable, some are not, right? And these fees change twice a year, which adds to the complexity of credit card processing, right? So when you look at your merchant statement at the end of the year or even at the end of the month, depending on the month, those interchange rates could change. So that Chase Sapphire card that I used at your business, that might go increase in October or April of 2024 versus it was a different rate last October of 2023. You know what I mean? And that's super difficult to keep up to date with, especially you guys as business owners, right? You have a thousand things going on. This is one little area of expense, but there's so much complexity that goes into it that it's difficult to just monitor the stuff. You have better things to do, right, with your time. And we understand that. And in addition to those changing, you also have the credit card processing companies changing their rates up to four times a year. So a lot of people use global payments, uh, world pay, first data, Clover, we'll get into that in a second, or you use your local bank, or you have some software integration, right, that partners with the credit card processing company. These guys are all making money, right, every time a transaction is swiped or manually entered at your store or at your business. And because it's super complicated to understand what interchange rates are versus the processing company's markup, meaning like what they're making and revenue and profit on your account specifically. And because they're changing all the time, it just gets really confusing. There's no transparency to it, right? So you're fighting an, up, an uphill battle from the beginning with this whole topic of conversation, right? In addition to that, let's just add another layer of complexity. There's three different types of pricing structures um, when it comes to credit card processing. There's actually a few more, but there's three basic ones. There's tiered pricing, which is terrible. So if you hear that, tiered pricing, bundled pricing, run the other way. There's interchange plus pricing, or cost plus pricing, which is a really good pricing model for your business. And then you have flat rate pricing, 
which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a fixed rate for each type of card that you accept. So, you know, for people that use Stripe or QuickBooks, right, sometimes you'll see it's 2.9% plus 30 cents a transaction every time I take a Visa MasterCard Discover. And then it might be 3.5% plus 30 cents a transaction for when I take American Express, right? That's a flat rate pricing structure. I won't go into details on those, but just realize that it's another layer of complexity. You guys have to understand what pricing structure you're on, your current business, which one's going to be or have a positive impact economically for my business and which one isn't, right? And that's a lot of the stuff that we do when we're evaluating your own stuff to see what are you priced at now? What should you be priced at? What's going to be your best alternative, right? And it kind of just dwindles down to what's the, what should my business be paying? And it goes back to what I originally said. At the end of the day, all this complexity that I talked about, right, you can simplify it by just dividing your total fees divided by total sales, right? That's the easiest way to do it. And if you're paying more than the 2.2 to 2.5% range, chances are that there's probably room for improvement and room to achieve cost savings. There's also another little wrinkle into this that has to do with software integrations, right? So let's move to the next slide. We'll go here for now. Um, softwares like Full Steam, RB Controls. Uh, there's other softwares out there like Jobber. Um, you know, the list goes on. Service Titan. All these softwares that make your life as a business owner easy, a lot of them integrate with the credit card processing companies. So you can see here I've listed out some credit card processing companies, some of which you may use. Others are just brand names within the industry, right? The software helps run your business, but the software wants to create a revenue stream for them. So they integrate with a credit card processing company. That credit card processing company gives them a percentage typically of the fees that you as a business owner are charged every time a customer comes in, swipes the credit card or debit cards. Typically with a software integration, okay, you pay more or a premium rather, to have that integrated service where everything's together. It's easy where you only have to go into one system. And if you can set up accounts or you can save credit card information on file, right, of your customers, you can auto rebuild. There's a lot. That you which is a um, and with that a lot of the times we get some feedback when we're doing consultations dealers will say well matt i have a software and i can only use my one credit card processing company because it integrates and the short answer to that question is that does not affect our work whether you have an integrated service provider or you do not, we are st still able to come in, do contract negotiation and our auditing to make sure that even with an integration, that you are priced accordingly based on the market, right? Based on where we're seeing other businesses like you and based on other businesses that are accepting similar types of cards like you, right? We leverage that stuff. So whether you have an integrated practice management software or ERP system, it doesn't matter. Our service still, apply, still applies, but realize that you're probably going to be paying more because of that integration, right? That's just something to keep in the back of your mind throughout the presentation. But I want to go back here to a slide about understanding your merchant fees, right? So this right here is a couple screenshots of an actual merchant statement. Um, I won't mention the name of the provider, but Merchant statements all look pretty similar, but the format of them can change slightly depending on who the credit card processing company is that you're using. So for example, if you're using your local bank, your statement might not look like this. If you're using a software, your statement might not look like this, but they all at the end of the day represent, you know, something similar where the processing company or your credit card processing company is giving to you the different types of cards that you accepted the number of transactions that you process in a given month, right? 
the percentage rates that you're being charged for those said cards and their service markup, all this stuff, right? Monthly fees, PCI costs, et cetera. So if you look here on the left-hand side in this first image, right, this just basically shows you the different types of cards that were accepted by a business during a given month, right? So you can see American Express at the top, it goes through Discover, Visa MasterCard, and it shows you between debit, business card, all these are interchange rates, what we first talked about in one of the first slides. But then what you can see highlighted in yellow is the markup that the credit card processing company is actually charging in addition to the interchange rates. And this is an example of tiered pricing, something that we talked about earlier in the presentation. Again, whenever you hear tiered pricing, you want to run the other way because it's not beneficial for your practice or your business. And it's just a markup. It's a way for them to make extra money. I mean, this statement, if you did the total fees divided by total sales, they were paying over, I think it was over 5%. And they were doing, as you can see down here, almost $200,000, $205,000 in a month in sales, which is you know standard for a, a, a large spa dealer, right? To pay 5% in fees on $200,000 a month in sales is a significant amount of money. And if you could reduce that by 20% without having to make any changes whatsoever, I propose the question to you guys, you know, is that worth a conversation? Is that beneficial for your business? Is that something you would want to look into, right? And again, highlighted in yellow, you know, these are just deceptive ways that credit card processing companies make extra money. So you can see down here at the bottom, Again, on that first image, it says GP fee disc assessment, right? This is supposed to be a discover assessment cost that again, we have no control over. But what this company does is they pad it, they mark it up. And this is something that we're really in the weeds, right? As a business owner, I don't expect you guys to know this, but this is just to showcase to you, these processing companies make it super confusing for you guys to understand what fee you should be paying versus what fee is non-negotiable. And in addition to that, credit card processing companies are padding those non-negotiable rates, but blaming it saying that, oh no, 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 that's not our charge. That's the Discover, the Visa, the MasterCard charge. We just pass that along to you, the business owner. When in reality, there is some truth to that, but they're also adding their own percentage rates on top of it. For example, this 0.27, that you guys see highlighted down here, that's supposed to be 0.3. And it may not seem like a big dollar amount, but down here, the visa assessment debit, that's 0 0.30, that's supposed to be 0.14. And you can see right here on the right-hand side under the fee amount, they were charged $625, when realistically that number should have been cut in half. And that's just something that as a business owner, you guys don't have time to look into, Again, it's super difficult to understand, and this just goes to show you how much these processing companies can get away with a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. Here's another example of a statement, very similar to the one we looked at. It's actually the sister company for the statement that we just looked at, but their formatting is different. And the reason I show this to you guys is because regardless of the credit card processing company that you use, you could be using a parent company of one or sister company of one and their formats change. So that makes another layer of complexity added to this because it's like, you may have one format that you get used to and then all of a sudden the format changes and now you have to go back and distinguish, well, now what does everything mean, right? Again, super confusing to understand. This is all the stuff that we look into when we're evaluating credit card processing fees for our clients looking at statements, et cetera. But again, you can see here, that simple calculation that I was talking about in this first image, if you take the $5,363 and you divide it by the $176,000 that they did in sales, you'll get your number. And that number does not equal the 2.2 to 2.5%, I can tell you right now. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but it's obviously a high dollar amount. So again, it goes back to asking you guys the question, if you could reduce this $5,300, $5,400 a month in fees that your business is paying, and you can reduce that to, let's just say, $2,000, that's a $3,300 a month savings that you just achieved. And that's just for one month, let alone the year, right? And again, this, this right image, 
that you see just goes to show you again, interchange rates are being listed out, but then they do a padded markup here that again, you as a business owner probably would have no idea what that even stands for or means. And it's just another way that the processing companies make extra money, right? And you can see down here, also highlighted in yellow, I've highlighted some monthly fees there. I'm sure a lot of you have seen non-receipt of PCI validation or non-compliance fees on your merchant statements if you scrutinize them, right? This is also something that our company helps with to make sure that you guys are in compliance with the credit card processing standards of accepting payments, meaning that you're keeping data secure. Um, there's a laundry list of things that PCI entails. We make sure that our clients are PCI compliant, right? So that these monthly fees of non-validation are not charged. These are very, very small in the grand scheme of things, but if your credit card processing company has been charging you whatever, $70 a month for PCI non-compliance, and you knew that just being compliant would avoid this charge and that you could get it refunded, you would probably be upset. It would probably be an easy way to save $70 a month. And again, these are just little things that we help our clients with that help you guys save money uh, with little to, to minimal legwork on your end. So I'm going to stop there. Are there any questions that you guys have at all? Um, anything you want to go over? I, I was really concentrating on those uh, statements and you're right. It, it's mystifying. And if, if, if you didn't have somebody who really understood what's happening in front of you, uh, you'd be, you know, bewildered and, and you'd think, oh, I you know it's a fee I got to pay. So I would just, you know, end up doing it. Um, this yeah. is in life. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, it doesn't matter the size of your business either, right? Unfortunately, like credit cards nowadays are a convenient way to take payment, right? You get the money right away, less the processing fees that you have to pay. Uh -huh. And everyone's carrying a piece of plastic in their wallet or their purse because they want the rewards points. But what people don't even understand is you, the business, are really paying for that customer's rewards, right? And this is how you're paying it. And again, it's I compare the industry a lot, Scott, to telecom industry, right? Here in the Northeast, we have Comcast, AT&T, Verizon as like the cable providers. And when you sign up for cable, you think you sign up for the basic package, it's whatever, $150 a month, and then six months later, your rates increase. And you're like, well, I didn't sign up for this. You go and badger with them and they may give you a refund or whatever, but it's the same concept in credit card processing, except it's probably magnified 10 times worse because there's so many different fees involved. And it's really easy for these processing companies to get away with overcharging your business because a lot of people just don't understand what it all means. Versus if you look at your cable bill and you didn't sign up for the ESPN package, for example, but now they started charging you for it, you could probably get it removed. You know what I mean? Um, right. Same concept here. It's just, it's much more complex. Yeah. So to give you guys a case study, Thatcher Pools, um, again, based out of Minnesota, I think they have three locations. They do retail service and a little bit of construction, right? So they're building pools, they're servicing the pools, and they're running their retail shop, selling spas. I think it's hot springs. Um, and in short, when they came to us, um, their total fees, again, that simple calculation that we talked about, divided by total sales was a little bit over 4%. And when we were able to do our cost savings and our cost reduction, we save them over $60,000 a year in fees that they pay. Now, $60,000, you know, depending on where you are in the country, et cetera, I mean, that's the salary of an employee or that's a really nice vacation if you own the business, right? Or you can put that into marketing expenditure or buying product or inventory, whatever the case may be, right? Like $60,000 is $60,000, right? There's no cost of goods sold in there, right? It's just savings. Um, and we obviously got their rate down to 2.66. So again, same calculation, total fees divided by total sales. And granted, that's not in the 2.2 to 2.5 range that we were talking about earlier 
on a few slides, but they also have an integrated service. So they do pay a little bit of a premium to have that integration, but nonetheless, saving almost 2% on the total sales amount that they do is a significant amount of money. Um, and with that, right, we audit the statements every month. That's what Merchant Cost Consulting Service does in addition to reducing the fees. We do monthly audits to make sure that what we negotiated for you stays in place. And that if your processing company tries to raise the rates, add additional fees, if that happens, we flag that within our system, we contact your processing company, and then we get it fixed. Whatever that price increase was in your account, right? So in the example of Thatcher Pools, there was two rate increases that happened on their account that we were able to rectify and fix, right? So the processing company simply just added a bunch of fees on their account that should not have been there. And it was simply because they just wanted to make more revenue on the account. We were able to get those fees back down to what we negotiated previously. We completed their PCI compliance. So in this case, they were being charged, you know, $69.99 a month for being non-compliant in their PCI costs. We got that waived and got three months of refunds. And they also had what we call in the industry auto enrollment fees. So a trick that these credit card processing companies do is when you guys sign up with them, those 26 pages of terms and conditions that no one reads, and again, I don't blame you, but in the fine print of those credit card processing contracts, they state that one, they can raise the rates anytime that they deem necessary. They just have to give you at least 30 to 60 days written notice of when that increase is going to take place. And usually that written notice is either at the bottom of your statement that you guys don't look at, or it's in an email that gets sent to your spam filter, right? Because it's like the email's coming from your processing company and no one looks at it, so it gets put to spam. But that's their, I put this in air quotes, notification, letting you know that your rates are going to increase. And a lot of the times they won't even tell you what the rates are going to increase to or which fees they're going to increase. Just gives you a notification that an increase is coming and to watch out on your statement, right? And a lot of the times in that fine print, getting back to the contract that you guys signed, they also have what's called auto enrollment fees, fees that you know, they check off a box on the application and it says that you will be auto enrolled after 90 days if you're still using our services for an analytics fee of $45 a month. And if you ask them, what is this analytics fee? They'll just tell you, oh, you know, it's a, it's a fee to help you understand the metrics of your business within your market, whatever. They give you some feel off a piece of paper. And really it's just a money grab. It's a way for them to make additional revenue. And it's like, those are things that you guys wouldn't notice or understand. You just think it's the cost of doing business or it's just another fee on your merchant statement. But if you know what the auto enrollment fees are, they're easily avoidable and you can get them refunded. So in the case of Thatcher pools, you know, that's what we were able to do for them. And, you know, the PCI stuff is small, you know, 70 bucks a month isn't really going to move the needle for a lot of people. The auto enrollment fees, that might only be $50 a month. That might not move the needle. But if you have signed up with your processing company and you've been using them for years, right? Paying $70 a month for whatever, 36 months, that's real money, right? That's real dollars that you could have saved simply by just doing one simple thing, right? And that's a lot of the stuff that we're doing for our clients in addition to the contract negotiations and the auditing, et cetera. Um, but that's just some oversight, right? For you guys to understand. So that's my spiel. Um, Again, I know it's not a super exciting topic of conversation, but if you're a business owner, it's the end of the year or the beginning of the year and you're tax season, you're looking at your expenses and you see that you did, you know, whatever, $10,000 in merchant fees for the year or more, this might be something you want to look into, ways that you can save money uh, without the headache of making changes, right? You don't have to change your software integration. You don't have to switch credit card processing companies in order to leverage our service. We work within the parameters of your business. We work with the current vendors that you're using, and we just leverage our data, knowledge, and expertise to help you guys drive down the fees that you pay every month to these major, major corporations that, quite frankly, don't really care about you. You're just a number in their system, right? So we're an advocate for the little guy, so to speak, trying to help you guys save money 
bring transparency to credit card processing, right? To help you guys understand how it all works and ultimately just put more money in your pocket. You know, Matt, um, I'm not as smart as most people. It took me years to figure out that something that you save every month and every year is just so much different than something that you save once. And, and you know, when you, if you're saving just $70 a month, that's over 800 a year. That's 8,000 in 10 years. The, you know, this is a point that I, I have to use in my own life. If you cut your monthly bills uh, on an ongoing basis, it's just so much more powerful because you, you save that every month. And, and th this is a lot of money over time uh, if, if you can get these things um, you know, negotiated down. Um, what, 100%. How much work is involved for uh, for the business that is is taking your services? So, so if someone wants to leverage us, what we always say to them is we can always do a free audit up front, right? So Scott, we'll look at, you know, if it's a seasonal pool and spa dealer, we'll look at maybe their busy season and their off season. And we'll take a look at the credit card processing statements and we'll give you guys a range of what the savings can be based upon your current pricing and where you're at, right? And as far as like legwork that a business owner needs to do, it, it's the bare minimum, right? If you wanna move forward with us, we'll deal directly with your credit card processing company on your behalf, right? Doesn't matter who it is. To use our data and analytics through the negotiations. All you guys have to do is either green light the savings that we achieve for you. So for example, you sign up with us, we handle negotiations, which typically take 30 to 60 days, depending on the processing company that we're dealing with. And once we get the results of what's agreed upon between us and your processing company, where we feel that these new rates and fees are adequate for your business, you as a business owner, green light it, you sign off. What will happen is they'll put like a pricing addendum to your current contract with your processing company and the new rates take effect. So for concrete legwork so to speak for a business owner you have to hop on a call with us to understand the process um, and then you sign off on the new pricing once we negotiate for you again with your current provider you're not changing anything and then from there we'll go over the savings report so i guess it's two phone calls scott because um, once the savings take effect we then prove to you where those savings are coming from so we send you a savings report that will showcase to the penny each fee that we save you money on and how much we actually saved you on that said fee. Um, outside of that, then it's just us monitoring your account on a monthly basis. Uh, I was gonna ask why, you know, I just saw your, your presentation. I, I, I feel enlightened on some things. Why can't a business owner just do this on their own versus hiring you now that they know that the companies are doing this? Yeah, 100%, I mean, it's a great question. We get asked it all the time. And I mean, the short answer is you can, right? Like there's nothing stopping you from negotiating a cable contract, right? Using that example with you sign up for cable for 150 bucks a month and then six months goes by and they add additional fees onto your account, right? The cable example is easy because that may be one or two fees. In credit card processing, if you look back at those statements that we went through, it's super difficult to understand like which fees can be modified and manipulated. And then it's like, well, once you find out what those fees are, how low can those fees actually go? And then it goes to another layer of, well, what if they change the name of those fees and it means something completely different or they add new fees in the future? You know what I mean? If you're not scrutinize, scrutinizing your statements monthly, it's tough to just keep up with, hey, what are all these fees mean? In addition to, you may do it once a year, right? Let's say you're a business owner, you don't want to share any of the savings, you, you know, you want to keep everything for yourself. You look at these pretty, you monitor these pretty tightly, you can contact your provider and negotiate with them, of course. But if you negotiate, a lot of the times what happens is they will throw you a bone of savings just to say, hey, we want to retain you as a client, keep our client happy, et cetera. And let's just say that they give you a couple hundred dollars a month in savings, which is great. If I were to tell you that you could have got a couple thousand dollars in savings versus a couple hundred, but you guys wanted to do it on your own, 
that's a big difference in cost savings on a monthly basis. And I think that's that in addition to you as a business owner, you only have access to your merchant statements. We have access to hundreds of thousands of statements. So we can leverage that data. We can leverage based on the amount of visa cards that you see Scott at your business versus Joe down the road, the amount of visa cards that he has and the software integration that he has and whatever the processing history that he has. We can leverage all that stuff versus you guys only have access to your data and reports that it's much more impactful, I would say, when we speak to them and showcase them this information than you guys just saying, hey, I, I think you're overcharging me. I want to get a better deal. You know what I mean? Because okay. you can do both. Right. But that's the biggest answer to your question. Right. No, no. And, and the knowledge is, is the power. I mean, you have to kind of know what what they can give on. And uh, so I could see that entering things. Uh, what yeah. we uh, you, you hinted at it a little bit before with the Thatcher pool statement. But what can a oh, uh, say a pool retailer or service company? Uh, expect in cost savings uh, if they're leveraging your type of service? Fully loaded question. Um, but the average savings is typically around 28% of the total fees that a, a business currently pays. That's average, right? And obviously, a lot of it depends on who's your current processing company, what's your current pricing as it stands today. Um, do you have an integration or not? Like there's a lot of different factors that come into play, but 28% in the total fees that you currently pay as a business owner on your credit card processing statements. If you remove that, that's typically the cost savings that you can, that you can see. And I mean, that's also why we do the free audit too, because listen, if we're only going to save you $50 a month, $50 is $50, but to share that, right. Cause that's our business model is, Whatever we save our clients, we take a percentage of. So to save a client $50 and then share that doesn't make much sense for you, the client, economically, and it doesn't make much sense for us. Um, but if it's a, a significant amount where you feel like it's beneficial to your business, great. And again, that's why we do the free audit to see, okay, well, what can we save Scott's business? You know, is Scott priced well? And we'll tell you if you're priced well in addition to that. It's like, if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. We're not you know, a, a consulting firm that's just going to try to sign up everyone that comes in. It's like, no, there's specific circumstances where it doesn't, it doesn't make sense for you as a business. And we'll obviously let you know that up front. I remember when I first heard about your company uh, years ago, uh, I remember just thinking, you know, that's a really different kind of, of business than I normally hear about. How did, how did a service like yours, you know, come about? How did you get started? Yeah. So, I mean, when we, in 2016, when we were talking about this, it was, we don't want to be a credit card processing company, right? People don't want to change who they use for credit card processing, especially if there's some type of integration with a software or ERP system that they have, right? But they want to save money. And we were like, there's a way for us to leverage our knowledge of payments to help businesses reduce what they pay ultimately without the headache of having to make that change, right? People that switch credit card processing companies, they're switching for literally one of two reasons. It's either the first reason they're trying to save money or two, there's some technical integration or some tech capability that they need to have because of something else that's part of their business, right? You're not just switching to switch. And we were like, if we can save businesses even more than they would by switching because we're driving their costs down to where they pay the same as like a Walmart, for example. How do we get, how do we, how do we get compensated for that? And we didn't reinvent the wheel on our business model as it pertains to sharing the savings, right? That's been around forever. There's a bunch of businesses that do telecom cost reduction, utilities cost reduction, shipping cost reduction, waste management. I mean, the list goes on. We just applied it to credit card processing because we felt like it was an expense that almost every business incurs, but that doesn't understand. And if we could shed some light on it, 
this was a way to make money. So, I mean, that's really how it started. Um, and we haven't looked back since. So that was how the inception of MCC started and began. So I, I guess, you know, to wind things up, I'm going to try to summarize things as I understand them. And you uh, correct me where I'm wrong. It sounds like <laughs> sure. can, uh, just as a business, you can call MCC and you'll look at what they're doing tell them uh, whether or not they can save money on the credit card fees that we all pay. And yep. you're basically going to turn that into fairly easy money uh, for that company. Yeah, if it's possible, yes. Again, we I, I use this quote, um, a lot of businesses will step over a dollar chasing a dime. Right, like a lot of businesses are concerned about sales. They're trying to get the next sale, sell the next cut tub, sell the next pool, and that's great because that generates revenue. But you have to look at it on the other side too. Is there a way for me to cut down expenses, right, where I can make more margin in my business? And yes, to your point, Scott, like that is our goal, right? You can take a look at your credit card processing fees. If savings can be obtained, we'll tell you roughly how much we can. And if that savings meets your expectation of this is savings worth pursuing and going to be helpful for my business, great. We'll help you get there. That's our goal. Cool. All right. Well, uh, uh, oh, wait a minute. We got one more question. Uh, it just came from okay. Ross. Uh, and she asks, is the initial audit of the records free? So when you look at their situation, is that part free? Yes, 100%. The only way we make money is if you decide to move forward with us and we save you money. That's it. So if you do move forward with us and we don't save you any money, let's just play devil's advocate for a second. If we can't achieve cost savings for you, you owe us nothing. At that point, it really just becomes more of a waste of our time than yours because we allocated the resources, we did the work up front, and we don't get compensated for it, which that's our problem, not yours, right? So, yes, the audit's free, and only if we save you money do share it. And that's our form of compensation. And if we don't save you anything, you owe us something. That's the beauty of it. One last one that just popped up is, uh, do you deal with Canadian customers? Yes, we love Canada. Canadian right. customers are great. I love I love them. Those those are great people up there. Uh, yep. All right, I think that should do it today, Matt. I uh, I learned a lot. I uh, I'm I'm not a pool and spa company. I work for a magazine, but um, it sounds like a great service that you're providing. Same concept applies. Media company doesn't matter. If you take credit cards and you pay fees. We're always there to help. Sounds good, man. Well, we all have work to do, so uh, we'll get back to it. Uh, thank you for uh, for telling us about this. I appreciate it, Scott. Thanks for having me, and obviously, thank you to the attendees for joining. Okay. Take care, man. We'll see you. Have a good one.